Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 13. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to create and drop tables from your database. So uh, I know this is something that a lot of you guys have probably been wondering and probably uh, wanted to do since the first tutorial, but because I showed you guys how to import a database. So in the first tutorial, uh, we imported a database. Um, with all of these tables. I know that a lot of you don't really know how to create a table just yet. So let's uh, cover that real quick. Uh, and before I actually jump into actually writing any query, I just wanna take a look at one of the other uh, tables as an example, because uh, over here there is a lot of useful information. Uh, so if you click on one of the tables and you look at the structure, uh, you can see that obviously we've got uh, each column and each column has a name. So ID, username, password, and so on. And each one of these columns uh, also has a data type. So that's very important because when we create a table, we're gonna have to declare what data type we want any of these fields to be. And uh, in this case for ID, we pretty much always just use an integer because it's gonna count from uh, one all the way down to however many uh, uh, entries we have in our database. So we're always going to use an int. Um, and then for most of the things that are small text characters, like a username, we'll use something called varchar. And there are other data types available. So we're not only going to stick to these, but you know, you get the point. Uh, we do have to work with uh, a data type. Then uh, collation, I'm just going to skip over this because this is going to be filled in automatically for you, uh, depending on what collation you originally set the database up as. Uh, and then the one important thing is to have a uh, null or not null uh, constraint declared. So in this case, this is called a constraint. And you can see that some of these are set to no, and that means that they're not allowed to have no value. So if something is not allowed to be null, it basically just means that it cannot be empty. There needs to be something filled in in the space. Uh, so these ones are all set to not null. And then the last, the first name and the last name, uh, I decided those aren't necessary. So uh, those are fine if they are set to uh, a null value. And then the last thing we can see here is my ID has been set to auto increment. And this is something I have mentioned in previous tutorials. But yeah, uh, because you want to always have an ID, of course, you don't want that null, but you also don't really want to have to fill in an ID every single time. So you might as well just set that to auto incre increment and let uh, your database do the filling in of the ID for you. Right. So now that we've uh, covered all of that, let's take a look at how to create a new database. So I'm going to go over to the SQL tab. Uh, well, not a new database, just a new table. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go over to the SQL tab and let's uh, type create uh, table. And that is uh, the command that we use to tell SQL that we want to create a table. And then you want to put in a table name. So in this case, let's give my table name something like reviews. And this could actually be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to be what I type in here. Uh, but uh, I'm just thinking we have an addresses table, we have an orders and a products table and a users table. So we might as well give users the ability to review a product and we'll keep all of those reviews in a reviews table, right? Uh, and then I'm gonna open up some brackets and I'm gonna jump down a couple lines. And uh, this is just the way I like to uh, write my create table queries because it means that I can put uh, basically a different column on each line and I'll be able to keep track of everything. So it's just going to keep everything nice and neat and tidy. If you wanted to write this all on one line, you could. Um, right. So now that we have done that, uh, let's put in our first column for this table. And our first column needs to be uh, an ID of some sort because we need to have a primary key in every single one of our tables. That's very, very important. So let's create an ID uh, or a, a column called review ID. That's going to uh, create our IDs. Then I want to give that a data type of int because it's gonna be a number from one to however many uh, um, I, uh, reviews that we have inserted into the database. And then for the last thing I want to put in here, or actually the second last thing I want to put in here is not 
null. So that is a not null constraint. It is called a constraint, but basically this just means that uh, our review ID is never allowed to not be null. And then I also want to give this a value of auto increment. Uh, and that's just going to mean that, of course, uh, the ID is gonna keep counting. Um, it's always gonna fill in a new number for us. We won't have to fill that in. Right, so review ID is done. That's our first column done. Uh, now we can create our second column. And this again could be anything you wanna store in your database. So let's just say I wanted to have a review title, then that would be the review title. Uh, and this can be a uh, var char or uh, just a char uh, data type. Um, and if we put uh, brackets in here, I can put this or set this equal to uh, 255. Let's make that varchar uh, of 255. And uh, basically this just means that uh, the user is allowed to enter a title that can be text. So basically anything that they wanna write on their keyboard can go into the uh, database, uh, but they're only allowed to enter this uh, make it 255 characters long. It cannot be longer than 255 characters. And then we can also set this to not null because of course we don't want our um, title to of our, of our review to be blank. So just set that to not null so that the user has to fill that in, right? And uh, an important thing to note right now is if you do want the, if you don't want the value to have um, not null, you could just not put not null in as a constraint and automatically uh, it will allow the user to enter a null value. Um, but I'm just gonna put in not null over here uh, because we do want that to be filled in. The next thing we're gonna want to do is put in a uh, description. This is where the user can type something uh, about the product, so their, their actual review. So let's give this a uh, value of review descript and this can be a value of text or a data type of text and we'll let them enter in a thousand characters. So text just allows the user to fill in more than a varchar. If you are using the varchar data type, there is a certain limit as to how many characters people can put in here, but text just allows us to have a few more characters. So in this case, I'm letting the user type in a thousand characters. And of course we do want them to have a description. So let's set that to not null. But again, if you wanted that to be blank, then don't declare not null over here, right? Um, and I hope you guys are noticing that I'm ending each one of my lines off with a comma because yeah, uh, it's one, one column, then another column, then another column, and all of those columns are separated by a comma, right? And uh, yeah, for the last two things that I want to mention, and this is probably something that you're not really going to be too familiar with just yet because we haven't um, dealt with linking tables yet, but usually uh, you want to link your table, you, you might want to link one table to another table. So in other words, uh, because this is a reviews table, I might want to link my users table to the reviews table so I can see who left that review. It would be really pointless if I just copied all of this data that's in the users table and put it here. So something that we do do in place of that is just make a, a value that can link to this table. So in this case, um, I can grab the users ID and I can set that in as an int value um, and set that as not null and basically we'll always fill in a user's ID. So we'll take a user's ID from this table and put it here. And then also we want to know where this review fits in with a product. Of course, we need to know what product this review belongs to. So uh, we can do exactly the same thing here. Grab the product ID, set that to int and not null. And whenever we uh, add a value to this database, we'll pull in a product's ID, right? And then the last line that you need to put in whenever creating a table is to set a primary key. So go ahead and type primary key, open up some brackets, and you need to grab whatever you want your primary key to be and put that in here. So in this case, I'm gonna be using the review ID as the primary key. And uh, yeah, that is our uh, query done. So let's just make sure that I ended if everything off correctly. Um, yeah, that bracket there and that bracket there. 
Cool, let's hit go. And you can see that my query has now been successful. So my SQL has returned an empty result set. That's because the uh, table has been created. So reviews has been created and it's here. It's just completely empty. There's nothing in it, right? So now we have created a table. Um, and that is how you go about creating a table. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how to drop or delete a table. And I feel like all my hard work is just going to go away because I'm going to type in drop table. And then what you want to do here is put in a table name. Now it is a good idea whenever you do this, whenever you decide to drop a table, maybe just uh, go over to the table, click export and export a backup. It's really, really important that you export a backup because you don't want to lose data that you actually might want to use again. But in this case, I know that my reviews table is empty. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop the table reviews. Uh, and again, uh, this is a very dangerous query to run because you might accidentally delete data that you uh, didn't mean to delete. So again, it's always good to make a backup, but I, I'm confident that this table is empty. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit go and uh, drop table reviews. You can see my SQL has returned an empty result set. So the, the table has been emptied. Um, and if I refresh my page, so you have to do a complete refresh. Um, you're going to notice that if you check out the database again, the reviews table is now gone. It's no longer there. And that is how to create and drop tables in MySQL. And before I end of this tutorial, I just want to send a huge shout out to these guys. So these guys are my patrons who contribute $5 or more every single month. And that goes a long way to helping me make more videos more often. So if you like the videos I create and you want to help me make more videos, then uh, consider becoming a patron and also uh, subscribe leave a comment, like, and share this video because that's also going to help my channel grow. And I'll see you guys in the next one.